Hello, my name's Ollie, and this is Pieces of Art, where we discuss interesting and beautiful art from around the world. Today, let's take a moment to enjoy the anatomy class at the Ecole de Beaux-Arts by François Salé. This is an oil painting, completed in 1888, and it's in the realism style. If you want to see it in person, it hangs in the Art Gallery of New South Wales in Sydney, Australia. We'll talk about the history and composition of this painting, and then I'm going to share the three things that I find most interesting about it, which are the meeting of the arts and the sciences, the use of mirror images, and the representations of life and death. We'll start with the history of the painting. It's sometime in the late 1800s, and we're looking at a lecture being held at an auditorium in the Ecole de Beaux-Arts, or School of Fine Arts in Paris, a university that still operates today and has been training artists for over 350 years. The professor leading the class was a doctor called Matthias Marie Duval, famous for his work on embryology. Duval was a professor of anatomy at the school, and it was his job to teach the students about the human body and its movements so that they could accurately reproduce people in their art. Next, let's talk about the composition of the piece. We're placed in the scene as a member of the audience. This gives us intimate access and makes us feel like we belong in the intense huddle of artists. The painting is pleasantly composed, and we can see this best if we overlay a grid such as the rule of thirds, which demonstrates intersections between key points, such as the top of the model's shoulders and the hips of the écorché. More on that later. Then we have Duval himself and his students. He looks every bit the medical doctor, sharply dressed with a piercing expression amplified by his gold pince-nez. He's confidently holding the model's right arm out to the audience for demonstration, and if we look closely at the students, we can see that they are not taking notes, but rather they're sketching as he talks. I love Salé's use of lighting. The main protagonists are thrown into almost shocking clarity by unseen overhead lighting, possibly from a skylight, whilst the audience fade into the darkness, creating a natural vignette effect framing the stage. The brushwork is fine and incredibly detailed. This is perhaps best seen in the intricate reproductions of the posters on the far back wall. Now I'd like to talk about the three things that I find most interesting about this painting. First up is the meeting of the arts and the sciences. In the 1800s, the faculties of arts and sciences were not as separate as they are today. In fact, they were really thought of being two sides of the same coin. The feeling was that in order to have a rounded education, you had to understand one to understand the other. The fusing of these disciplines is seen throughout the painting and there are several juxtapositions between the seeming softness of humanity and the rigidity of science. Firstly, let's look at the model. He's muscular and stands on a raised platform. He looks more like he's taking part in a live drawing class than an anatomy lecture. His trousers are casual and loosely worn. If we look at the wooden stand to the right of the painting, we can see his top draped over it, half spilling over the side. Now contrast these warm and relaxed elements to the cabinet directly across on the right. It's topped with a neat and ordered assortment of flasks and beakers, as well as the skeleton of a bird and preserved specimens. The equipment is neatly arranged and made of cold glass. These two elements frame Duval, science to his right and the arts to his left. The second thing I find most interesting about this painting are the positions of the people depicted and Salé's use of mirroring in his composition. Let's start with the model. He's standing with his weight on the left leg and his torso arched ever so slightly towards the rear of the room. It almost looks as though he's trying to pull away from the professor's touch. Also, notice his gaze downwards towards the point the professor is touching on his arm. He looks perhaps curious perhaps wary. Next, let's look at Professor Duval himself. His expression is intense, 
and he looks away from the model and out towards his audience. Contrasting the model's backwards pull, his body is pushing forward into the room. In this way, they give balance to each other and almost appear connected as a whole. Finally, let's look at the students. As a group, they form a huddle in the shape of a C that seems to hold the main protagonists on the stage. Individually, they're mostly hunched over in concentration. The one student in the foreground sits apart from the others on his own stool, not sketching, but still attentively listening. There is some lovely symmetry and mirroring in the painting. Look at the feet of the professor and those of the model. One dressed in loose casual clothing, the other one more formal, but their feet are almost exact replicas. The right foot facing forward and the left turned at an angle away. Once again, this connects the two figures together. Now, we've gotten this far in the video without talking about the slightly sinister looking plaster cast on the left. It's an écorché, a representation of a person removed of skin to show the muscles below. In this case, it would be likely used as a teaching aid to help the student artists better visualize the mechanics of movement. This écorché is life-sized and it towers above the scene, shining in the light with one arm outstretched above. It mirrors two elements in the painting. The first is with the anatomical poster on the back wall. The écorché's body bends to the left of the viewer with its left arm raised above, whereas the figure in the drawing mirrors this pose with its right arm held aloft. The écorché also forms a reflection with the model. They stand to the left and the right of the frame, facing each other, the animate and the lifeless. Which brings us on to the final thing I'd like to share with you, the depictions of life and death. Lectures, such as the one here by Professor Duval, were aimed at moving students towards showing the human body as being organic, rather than just the sum of its parts. That's why he's holding the arm of a real, living, breathing man. But throughout the painting, there are scattered memento moris, or reminders of death, a common theme over several generations of artists. Their role is to act as a reminder to the viewer of their own frail humanity and the inevitability of death, not to be depressingly morbid, but rather to encourage us to appreciate the richness of the life we're living. They're quite subtle, but they reveal themselves on close inspection. There's the écorché, of course, a humanoid but inanimate form. Then there are the bones of the shoulder girdle and upper limb on the table. And finally, the skeleton of a bird perched atop the cabinet. I hope you've enjoyed looking at the anatomy class at the École de Beaux-Arts with me today. It's one of my favourite paintings, not just because it's beautifully lit and expertly composed, but because I think it's a great reminder that we need to keep humanity in everything we do and that we're always greater than the sum of our parts. Thanks for joining me today to explore this painting and please subscribe for more pieces of art.